Jodie Sizer is the CEO of the Great Ocean Road Authority. Jodie, thanks so much for calling through. Lots of people have lots of questions about the authority and what you do. Can we start with how the authority is made up? Who's in the authority? Good morning, Rochelle. Thank you for the opportunity to join. And it's fabulous to listen the listeners for you to call in and have such great passion about the many issues that we're challenging along the Great Ocean Road. Uh, to your question, who's in the Great Ocean Road Authority? We're a relatively newly established authority. I'm the CEO. We have about 200 staff. We have uh, a board of 11 people that were uh, selected by the minister based on their skill set who provide incredible leadership. We have an executive team of five who work across the various portfolios within the business from environmental advocacy and conservation to infrastructure to our commercial businesses managing our caravan parks um, and a great leadership team across the business, across the whole of the road. That's huge. <laughs> this is a huge organisation. Can you tell us, Jodie, what exactly does the Great Ocean Road Authority do? What are you responsible for? Well, it's a great question. We were established, as I mentioned, in December 2020 in response to some very loud concerns from community for many, many decades that have been uh, unresponded in the way that the creation of a single point of contact and in this instance, a, a state authority was to be established. And the three issues that really were identified as priority to be able to tackle uh, that of fighting the impacts of climate change and in particular that of erosion, um, visitation management and ensuring that we do have the appropriate levels of environmental advocacy as we are looking for the future development and the intergenerational equity of our visitors and our communities along the Great Ocean Road. Given that you've just spoken about 200 staff members, 11 on the board, that you've got five executives, yet from the people that we've heard from this morning, people are struggling to get into contact with you and to figure out who you are and what you do and whether or not even any of those over 200 people that we've just listed are locals. So can we start with where are you based? Are you based somewhere along the Great Ocean Road? Are you in the Otway Shire? Oh, um, we're based all the way along the Great Ocean Road. We have an office in Apollo Bay, in Anglesey. We have an office here in Baines Crescent, in Torquay. All of those staff are local. We operate eight caravan parks along the Great Ocean Road and have a very strong presence in each of those communities. And it's it's interesting to hear uh, the number of people that have come in via the calls mm -hmm. because we've had thousands of individuals engage with various place-based projects along the Great Ocean Road from the Apollo Bay Rec Reserve to the Fisherman Beach um, upgrade, literally thousands on each of those projects that come with their individual views and their perspectives from their various community groups that are having important input into those projects. And Fisherman's Beach is a great example where we've listened to those community views, we've gone back to redesign, we've come back with another round of consultation. But um, 21 communities along the Great Ocean Road, Rochelle, and some have various interest groups in, in Lawn, where I've spent a lot of time in the last couple of weeks, there's 12 interest groups that are represented by various committees and we are meeting with them all. Yesterday, I spent the day at the community forum with Y River um, at a fundraiser on Friday with the Lawn community. So we are um, many examples of engagement. But, um, and in Skeens Creek, I heard the community member speak to Skeens Creek that uh, we met with the Skeens Creek community advocacy group who had some great input into the redevelopment of Skeens Creek uh, camping Reserve. It's one of those many mm. legacy issues. There's decades of legacy issues. And There's the lots of legacy of issues. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and it, we're here in the solution-focused um, uh, problem-solving mode and bringing a very new I, approach. Jody, can I ask you about one of those solutions that we keep hearing about from people again and again? Just toll the tour buses. What do you reckon? Should there be a toll on the Great Ocean Road? Well, the Premier's already stated that there won't be a toll on the Great Ocean Road, but there are a lot of considerations if we're going to adapt a approach to ensure the future generations are able to access the Great Ocean Road as we've always done. The tour of, uh, tourism operators, I think we need to consider a sophisticated approach to how we are ensuring that the millions of people that come along the Great Ocean Road are spending more than their 18 cents and the impact of their footprint is far greater than that. So we're leading this year a Vision 2100 
strategic approach to say Jody, where... Can I, Jody, can I just jump in? Because I know we're coming up to the 12 o'clock news and I really would like <laughs> to just get a couple more questions into you because I think that's a really interesting one about, about how we make sure that, that money is being spent along the road. Is there a way of charging, say, registration or access fees or something like that, similar to what they do at Melbourne Airport, for example, that's not, but not strictly a toll, but it's a way of getting money back from the people using the road? So you're absolutely right. And one of the primary um, drivers for us is everything that is earned along the Great Ocean Road is reinvested back into the Great Ocean Road. And that comes from all of our caravan parks, the leases, the licence, the permit operating. Another part to that work, as we're building this organisation, is how the user of the Great Ocean Road does pay. So whether it's through tourism operators or access fees, as we've seen in national parks at various parts across Australia or whether there is um, paid parking in some parts we've seen before. We're investigating all those models over the next 12 months and there will be a lot of active uh, community mm. consultation in that process. How long has the authority been together? Just over two years. It's been an incredible build to transition the existing committees of management into a new authority okay. to bring that leadership and so coordination role. Two years, 200 people, what would you say has been achieved so far? Have, have any of the ideas, any of these legacy issues, we know what the issues are, what has actually been achieved in those two years? Oh, an incredible amount in transitioning and bringing together the, uh, the organisation. Last year alone, we reinvested $19 million back into the Great Ocean Road itself. There's a significant amount of infrastructure that's being built um, Can you give us some examples of that, Jody? Like we've heard from people talking about toilets. There are no toilets along the Great Ocean Road. Have you built any toilets? <laughs> yes, there's forty four. I care about toilets. <laughs> We're very passionate yeah, about very toilets. Passionate. <laughs> how many how many toilets, toilets? sorry? Forty four, I think, at my last recollection of the numbers, but we are undertaking a, a toilet strategy and it's a great example <laughs> of toilets. <laughs> It sounds funny, but it's something no, it's that we not. hear most about. We're not about. laughing because it's funny. It's so necessary, but I'd love the idea we've, that there's a toilet strategy. We've but, got a few texts that have come in here, Jodie, and, and, and people are saying, so how many more feasibility studies do we need before we get our walking track and cycling track? Someone else says, <laughs> this sounds like engagement with no action. Please list the achievements from Jody, uh, from Deb, sorry, in Port Melbourne. And a lot of people talking about a lot of talk, but no action. So I think it is that question of what are you hoping to do this year? What can we see? this year some really can i give you a short snippet of some of the great activities yes. over the last and you will have to be years. short jody apologies because we we're be heading short. the news yep well in the infrastructure that's been built along the caravan parks let me focus on this year look we've just launched our community engagement strategy which is a new formal structure of how community can be involved in a more formal way rather than our instance by instance reply on each of the um of the community events and activities. But importantly, this year we will be hosting our inaugural summit, which brings the exciting work that we see globally in the Biodiversity Council framework, leading with their four, um, four goals and 24 targets, the National Environmental Agenda, and our new minister in Ingrid Stitt, the great leadership we can bring to the place-based solutions across mm. the community in um, environmental advocacy. We've received grants from the Victorian government on coastal erosion, so there's a lot of master planning. and. But from my perspective, we do need to plan. There's been an absence of a whole of Great Ocean Road view with a quadruple bottom line approach that's really considering the, the voices of each of those place-based community advocacy positions. But importantly, the social, the economic, the environment, environmental and the cultural, that yeah. has not been done before on a whole of picture basis. And the rights of the TOs have not been considered in a lot of the development thus far. So it's important that we do have a strategic approach and then we can respond on an instance by instance basis. And I have an open invitation and open door, so if people well, are not... You might regret me. that you've just said that, <laughs> Jody, but we appreciate the fact that you've called us anyhow and to try and get through some of those questions. And people can also head to the Great Ocean Road Authority. They can maybe email those, those questions through as well. Jody Sizer, we appreciate you calling through. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Michelle. Anytime. See you.